I built this cabin right behind me in 23 days. It's a remote off-grid cabin. I have a little more landscaping to do, but the site turned out to be so beautiful. But there she is. The long-awaited finished project. And if you saw the build video, you might wonder how much it cost, how hard was it really, and would I recommend it to someone with little to no building skills? There was a lot of struggles going on behind the scenes. It was like half an inch too short, and I'm like, what the crap? That sucks really bad, and I'm a perfectionist. I really want to fix it. Oh, a nightmare of a load. I need to give up. Everything takes so much longer. I'm very slow at this. Got out of water. I'm out of steam. I am beat. So I'm going to reveal those moments in this video. Stay tuned. I'm going to open up this place and we'll have a chat. So if you're new to this channel, maybe you haven't seen that this cabin that I built has an expanding wall. It's so got this deck experience. I'm here on a remote river. It's just pretty lovely. So this is my site. Now I built this place just for me, but there's plenty of room to put another cot here. You can sleep two people in here. This A-frame is eight by 10. It's got 12 foot ceilings and it's on a 12 by 14 deck. Show you the top here. And there's Moose. Hi buddy. The experience I came to the table with was that of just a general laborer. Having helped with a lot of builds, log cabins and stick frame cabins, but not being fully in charge of the decision making. So with this, there were a few things that I really had to think through. And, and for me, I need to see the problem in front of me. I can't visualize it or imagine it until it's right in front of my eyeball. So there were things every day that stopped me in my tracks. There's always something that pops up that needs to get figured out. For instance, I had to add another purlin up here because that first four by eight sheet of plywood completely covered all the nailer. So there's nothing for the top of this piece to nail into. Like it, it needs to land on something so you can nail it in. So I had to add that. If I thought something was going to be easy, inevitably something would come up and I would have to solve a problem. So I'm having a problem getting my generator started. Thinking it probably has a little bit of water in the gas. This is the float bowl right here. I'm gonna drain off some of that. So <laughs> I ate this cookie real quick. A lot of times water in the float bowl will screw you over pretty good. All right, let's hope. Please, please, please. Yes, yes, yes! Which was just the baseline for this entire build. It's twice as long as I thought it would be. This place is only accessible by ATV. Bringing all the materials in by ATV, it, it made the time frame much longer. It made the difficulty much more. Just transporting materials could eat up half of my day. So although this is a simple design, I wouldn't say it was easy. There was a lot of challenges. There's nothing but angle cuts. <laughs> One of the first challenges was the cost of building materials in 2021, which is the year I built this, when it was probably double the price of any other time in history. So the cost of this build completely, including this big deck and everything, was just over $3,000. Now I know I could have got that down without building this deck as big as I did, without the lumber prices being so high as they were in 2021. So there are some ways you could make this cheaper, but I'm really a fan of decks and porches, like of anything in a house, I wanna be outside the most. And of course this design lends itself for you being outside. So I wanted a big deck, I'm on a river, I just wanted space all the way around the A-frame to enjoy this place. Now the plans for this A-frame is available online. It's Deke Diedrichsen who designed this A-frame. 
It's been built many times on the internet. You can see many different designs of this, which is super fun to see what other people are doing. Yeah, shout out to him for this cool design. I love the opening door. I mean, that's why I chose this thing. It's so cool. So when you buy the plants, which are $30, you get a set of drawings. So you're getting a material list for just the A-frame and the layout of the A-frame. Um, and I've never worked with plans before and I've never worked completely alone. So basically I'm just looking at some drawings that give you dimensions and stuff, but it does not tell you how to build. And that's okay, that's what plans are. But you need to be aware, when you buy a set of plans, it's not gonna teach you how to build. It's not gonna solve problems for you like that, trying to fit the end walls into an A-frame end. So stuff like this was a challenge to figure out. I needed to build a framework here on each end wall so that I could not only frame in the doors and windows but so that I could put in the the tongue and groove so I didn't know how I was going to fit a 2x4 against this angled 2x6 uh, this is the best I came up with I think it works but you know that's not in the plans it doesn't tell you how to do that so there's stuff you have to figure out for yourself does it's not going to tell you how to frame the walls it's just going to show a picture of it the other thing in the plans which i think is a good idea you can notice that this purlin acts like shelf and this one is flat now in the plans they have all of these purlins stick out so you can utilize them as shelves well i did that at first i had these lower ones shelf like as well and then i got thinking this place you know there's not a lot of floor room I know I'm gonna have my bed right against the wall. And if I had this sticking out, you know, it would come out to here and I would have to back up my bed into the floor space. And also, look what would happen then. I wouldn't have been able to open my door. I actually redid that and made them flat. So if you're gonna build this, just keep that in mind. There's just not a lot of space. And I could utilize more space up here. In fact, the plans call for you know, putting in like a tiny little loft. Um, it's pretty small. I, I personally feel like it's unusable space for a loft, but you could put some shelving across here and have a little, little half loft just to store stuff. But that would be up to you. Otherwise, the one shelf purlin is enough for me. The rest were flat. The other mystery to solve is how do you waterproof a movable wall with a roof line and in the plans they call for rubber roofing which I didn't know what that was but it's just this flexible rubber material that you know you put down before you put the the main roof and it's flexible and it spans the gap and that worked really well but before I got to that problem I had this problem when I put on the clear panels and went to lift this for the first time, it was binding right here. So I had to cut out a piece of the clear panel roofing so that it would go against the frame and not bind and break. That's not in the plans. You, this is stuff you gotta figure out on the fly. And I just cut a piece out and made the rubber roofing a little longer there to cover that gap. The other problem a lot of people have had with this build is if you have any kind of deck on the outside, any water coming off straight streaming off that a-frame is going to go right back into the floor so that is why there is a gap here so that the water can come off the a-frame and go right to the ground that's also why i did some copper flashing just to kind of protect the wood a little bit more there but i should be good to go i think it would be really easy with any project that you're kind of just new at is to overthink it and to be stymied by an action by overthinking it. So there's deciding whether I was gonna build on posts and pad, whether I was just gonna build on blocks. Um, and I decided to go with blocks just because it seemed a little easier at the moment. Getting something square and level, it, it's vital. So I've done a little redneck engineering here because turns out I was short two boards because I forgot to incorporate my rim joists in my lumber count. So I kind of scabbed together something I thought would work and then the next time I got there, I discovered that I had laid out the floor backwards. And you don't really realize that that's gonna be a mistake until you put down your three quarter inch plywood floor. Okay, so I've realized I've made a couple of pretty big mistakes. And it doesn't hit a floor joist. 
It can't be hanging in the middle. There's nothing to nail it to. You need a nailer. I absolutely must have another floor joist. So then I had to rip everything out, put in some new two by eights for the floor. It was just one thing after another that had to be figured out and mistakes I had made had to be fixed. And that's part of learning and it's okay, but it's frustrating in the moment because you just want to get stuff done. That's how it is. That's how it goes. Stuff, you know, you win and you lose and you learn. So getting in there, just doing it, figuring yes. it out, only one <laughs> thing at a time. It's key to pulling off that new skill, that new thing you're doing that you may be a little unsure of. So I remeasured this rim joist here. It's half an inch too long. Need to knock these out, knock half an inch off and do this all over again. One of the biggest struggles I had was the metal roofing. Not because metal roofing is hard, because it's not. It should be the fastest thing that comes together on your build. It's really easy, but oh my goodness, I had so many problems. My issue was I cut the metal roofing at home without my exact measurements here on the build. And on the short wall side, I cut the metal too long. Okay, this is the finished side of the roof. You can see that my front side, you know, is way long. And that's no problem. You can just cut metal roofing with a skill saw blade backwards. But I didn't have a wrench to fit the nut on my skill saw so I could flip that blade around. So I had to adapt and it was a giant disaster. I tried pounding it over on the ground and I was thinking, I, I've just ruined this metal. Abandoned that idea. I had still had two more straight pieces, which I put up. They're too long. And then I've got a boogered up piece that I hammered. I'm gonna get that up and then I'm going to sledge it over. So then I just decided to install it on the roof and pound it over with my sledgehammer. And I'm at the top of my ladder, on the top of my building, sledging over my roof metal. It was heartbreaking. Then I've gotta get the ridge cap on, which doesn't wanna go on with bent up, crashed up metal on top. So the whole operation was just so frustrating and it was just ready to be done. And that's why the ridge cap and the roof, uh, they're not perfect because, you know, it's gonna keep me dry <laughs> and that's important. And I got it done, but wow. And the other thing I did is I cut the ridge cap too short initially. So I had to stack it up with another piece. So that's doubled up on that end. And uh, yeah, it is what it is. That, that idea of like measure twice, cut once. Well, measure on site, Me take your measurements for real, not from plans. You got to do everything on site as it's in front of you. That was a rough day. The other big problem to solve, and it's one I'm still solving, and that is getting this swing wall behind me to raise without so much effort from me because it's really quite heavy. So I came up with this post system, kind of engineered it. I saw another build where they did something similar like this and I thought that works great, but um, I under engineered it and made it too short. I, I was looking at like the bottom here. That's enough of a difference and uh, it's not. So here's the top of my roof and like straight across here is my beam and that's not gonna work. I did try to engineer something a little taller with the pulley but it's still not tall enough. <sighs> I thought I had it fixed. It's a giant failure. All because I didn't make this tall enough. So I'm thinking now I may install some gas struts on the side of the door. Those would be like those things that help to lift like your, the hatch of your car. Get rid of these posts, have it lift on its own and everyone's happy. Well, I'm happy. <laughs> and if I'm happy, you're happy, right? Oh my goodness. Very maddening day. I mean, I didn't get much done because I was messing with this, so. But that, that's pretty cool. Did put a well in, beautiful water. It's a little short, so I'm gonna be adding another stick of pipe and a ball valve, and that will uh, raise this up and let me keep the pump prime. So that is my water situation. And as far as an outhouse, I'm gonna be building one of those next year. Right now I just have one little spot dug out, a little bucket toilet, and 
that's what I'm using right now. If you want to see the video where I put this well in, I'll put the link below. There is heat in here. I mean, this is just a summer cabin. This is basically a wooden tent. So I'm going to mainly be using this in the summer. I do have a little buddy heater that I've been using in here. Uh, I did an overnight with a friend in here and we had the buddy heater and it really heated it up nicely. I thought about putting a tiny little wood stove like right here, something I could just use in the winter and, and just take out of the place in the summer. But I think the buddy heater is the solution for now for any kind of heat that I need. It's always a campfire. So would I recommend this build to someone who was new at building? Absolutely. There's lots to learn, but there's lots to learn with every project and you can overthink every project and never do anything. I would say this is a simple build, but it's not easy. And maybe getting a helper for certain moments, like moving heavy boards, putting the plywood on the roof, raising the A-frames, there's certainly things that somebody can help you with. But you can figure it out yourself. There's lots of little helps, there's lots of little things you can do to help yourself as a solo builder. You know, tacking things in place that will help hold your boards in place while you place it where you need it. I mean, all this plywood I put on the roof, I had a two by four already in place so that once I got it in place, things would settle on that. That would hold the weight of the plywood, allowing me time to knock it in with some nails. Extremely helpful to have somebody who already knows how to build answer and help you solve some of those questions and problems you're going to come up with. But I absolutely would encourage someone to do this build. To have a little starter cabin project, it's awesome. And I'm already like, can't wait to build my next thing. And I do have an exciting next build, so. I hope you have been inspired. I hope you are inspired to do something, whatever it is. And it could be just build a garden box to start with. Like, I don't know, it's very empowering to know how to build and how to put something together like this. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. This is girl in the woods, she gone. Oh, don't forget to get outside and get happy. Everything's done. Oh, we did it, baby. We built the cabin.